Hey everybody, Rich back again with another Revit family video here. I'm going to follow up from my last video with the annotation, annotative, um, not annotative, back that up, the detail item um, that I use for uh, wood framed uh, wall construction on my wall sections and details. So let me flip over to a, uh, Revit again. There we go. And um, I put the I put the uh, the component in uh, or the detail item in here uh, for the first part. But again, this is just a typical like two two story building. I just made a box uh, with a generic foundation. And uh, let me switch over to thin lines just to show it here. The um, you know so I have the two by framing walls and the uh, like a two by ten for the um, the floor framing here and then uh, and also the component has the drywall on the interior and then the uh, double top plate up to the floor now if I wanted to add it to the second level I could just go to component and load that in it the insertion is right here at this uh, the two by on the wall so I can just go right here to the floor level um, insert the uh, detail item and then I can stretch this grip up to and I will just put it up to the roof level here and and move on now uh, if I wanted it over here on the other side I could do like a mirror you know like um, if we go to modify and um, mirror using a draw axis or anything like that uh, or the other thing I can do is just you know just do copy and um, since the insertion point is right here on the uh, the two by in the wall, I can do that and then actually just flip these. I'm just hitting the space bar, but you can also do the, um, where's the little arrow? I know there's a little arrow here for it somewhere. Oh, there it is, it's kind of over, but you can just click that. And then, so the, the family itself has um, a, a mirror um, kind of parameter or, component to it. So so how did I make this? Um, well, let's just go right into the edit family. I'll just show you the, the in the family editor itself. Uh, basically, there's just a few, there's a handful of parameters that I put in this um, family. And, um, you know, went from there. So the, 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 the parameters that I have are really determining the the height of the wall and then the width of the the wall studs and the I guess really the depth of the floor the floor framing so you can see here I have floor framing depth um, I actually also have floor sheathing thickness so there is a component here like if, let's uh, let's just go back whoop, back to the section and let's just say you know, I'm just going to go to this modeled element, and it's probably three quarter inch, right? So let's just say it's, um, you know, uh, let's. I'm typically want to be half inch, but I'm just going to make it half inch. Uh, actually, I'm going to make it a quarter inch, just to just so just to see it. You know, typically it would be like three quarter inch. That's fine. Okay, so now this just became thinner, and you can see here that now the the component. The detail item, the the wall stud is still at the same level, but the the floor isn't. So I have this kind of floor thickness parameter too that changes. Now it doesn't, it kind of actually doesn't um, change in both. I have to actually click both the 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 top and the bottom of the stud to adjust it. But um, but yeah, but still it, it can be adjusted to whatever um, thickness that you have for sheathing in your in your floor assembly. Um, but yeah, so that's that's a um, another parameter. Then you see wall stud width and bottom of first floor. So all of these are the, kind of the variables depending on what your situation is, and then everything else is just kind of attached to these parameters. Now they're not locked to component to component, meaning they're not this the the gypsum wall board is not locked to the the wall stud that I have here. Or everything everything is locked to reference planes so you have your reference planes and actually hold on one second it looks like I can't I have some that are pinned so I can't select them but here we go so um, 
any of these reference planes um, are what drives this whole component. So, or this whole um, uh, detail component. You know, so I have um, a reference plane for the bottom of the floor, floor framing, the top of the floor framing, the um, base of the whole wall assembly, and the top of the wall, whole wall assembly, and then the the width of it. So we have one here, and actually, um, here's the here it is. Um, let me just kind of stretch this just to, so you can see it. Um, for the width and then all of these like so if you see if I click on any of the reference planes um, not that one let's go to the other one that's kind of like the base you can see um, my parameter for wall stud width turns kind of blue um, same deal for any of these you can see floor framing depth turns blue if I touch the uh, top reference plane, both of floor framing depth and floor sheathing thickness turn blue. And then they should, this one, the floor, and then the bottom of the first floor may go. Uh, oh, actually, no. Oh, I know why. Because this is kind of like your, um, um, what you call it, uh, origin. You can see here, define origin. So th this is an origin reference plane. This is an origin reference plane. That's how it's set that when you insert, it goes right to this corner. Um, but then if I click the top one, yeah, you again, you'll see the, the first floor parameter is, um, um, you know, kind of locked or, or touching, you know, connected to this, this reference plane. So how you do that, is basically with the parameters is it starts off as a simple um, simple uh, dimension and you just go reference plane reference plane you have that and then you assign um, whichever parameter you have um, for the sake of this uh, the length of this video I'm not going to go too much into that I think I think this is kind of like a multi-parter but I just wanted to kind of introduce this and say that everything is off of the reference planes and then you add the parameters to those reference planes and that's how you get everything to kind of move and be uh, flexible um, then the actual um, let's just say uh, the actual elements are then locked to the reference plane so for example this is actually this is actually the uh, just the gypsum wall board um, component that you can get from Revit out of the box. It's a line-based component, so there's an um, endpoints to it. You can see endpoint to endpoint. So how you lock it to a reference plane is you just use the align tool, and you click the reference plane and then the edge of the, um, the component itself. And then once you're done, what you'll see is, so if I click on here, you're going to see this lock here. So this and actually if I mouse over it, it says create or remove a length or alignment constraint. So there's a constraint. So you're constraining this component to this reference plane. So it's already locked. I'm actually going to unlock it. Um, now it's, it's not constrained to it, but if I go back to a line, go here to the reference plane itself, I click, I mouse over to the, um, uh, the component and then it'll, it'll, um, you have the opportunity, it's, it's a line, but you have the opportunity to lock it. So then you can lock it there, and now that component is, is locked. Same thing, actually, you have to do it for the endpoints, too. So you go endpoint, or you click on the reference plane here, and then you can mouse over. You might have to tab, but you can see here, um, I have the endpoint for that, and then I would click here. You can see here it's, it's unlocked, but then I can lock it. Um, it over uh, the reason why it says over constrained is it's actually already locked <laughs> so you can see here here's the locked so so just real quick when I click on here you can see this lock shown here is meaning that it's uh, constrained to the reference plane and then this lock is, is saying that it's, it's um, the the endpoint is um, constrained to the reference plane um, and then it's just a matter of going through all the components and, and, and locking them to the, to the different reference planes. So, for example, um, this item here is actually the way I make the, um, 
the studs is I do a masking region first and then I have uh, detail lines. So the masking region is locked to the widths here and here. Um, in terms of the, 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 the width of it is, um, is locked to the two reference planes. And then actually what I do, because this is not a variable, I don't recommend necessarily doing this all the time in families, but I actually just have a simple locked dimension that locks the, the thickness of this. It's always going to be an inch and a half. I'm not going to change it. Um, so I didn't add another reference plane. You can do a reference plane and lock it and everything, but um, in this case, because it's not a variable and doesn't change depending on the parameters that you have, I just locked it um, line to line here for the inch and a half. But, um, and then after that, you have to then lock, again, you have to lock these lines to the reference planes because that's a variable and it's moving uh, you know, left to right or you know, the width is moving. Um, and then also you have to align it. You can see here, I actually have this endpoint is locked to this line of the, uh, the masking region. Um, and then, you know, again, I do, it, I do it the same thing for, for this one. It's just different reference planes. Um, but again, I'm, I'm locking the, the inch and a half. And uh, same deal up here um, with the, uh, the double top, uh, top plates. So uh, I'm going to leave it at that um, in terms of trying to keep this um, some, somewhat short and sweet. Um, and then uh, on the next, the next video that I put out, I will um, cover uh, visibility parameters um, along with um, uh, some, uh, s some of the other parameter um, settings that are um, throughout the, uh, you know, within the family. So hope this is helpful. If you guys have any questions, please uh, feel free to comment on the, uh, the video or, or the post. And uh, until next time, I'll see you.